All right. Uh, now that we know what logarithms are, let's talk about some of the properties of logarithms. And we'll find that because logarithms are so closely related to exponentials, then a lot of properties have kind of the same feel to them. They look a little bit different, but they've got the same kind of feel. So um, this is to review the properties of logarithms. Have to get that uh, fixed. Um, you know, no pages there. Um, and be able to use them efficiently in understanding and simplifying expressions. So logarithms, just like exponentials, are not some magical, mysterious thing. They had to come up with a name, some kind of notation for the opposite of an exponential. And uh, they didn't just use inverse exponential or something like that. Um, they chose to call them logarithms. Um, and they needed it. We need to be able to, to reverse those things. So this happens to be what they chose. And they chose a notation that we'll take a look at here to uh, understand that. Okay? And so the, the there and back again part here, we're going to tie in, again, the idea of an exponential, b to the power, and the reverse of that, log base b, okay, as being this, uh, this is the relationship between these things. And if we put an x in here at the beginning, some input, the input comes out as a y. And so if we start with the x, and we run it through the arrow to the right, it says put that in the exponent of b, and you will arrive at y. And this gives us an equation in what we call the exponential form. This same relationship is captured if we start with the y. So if we start with the y, on the right hand side and we follow that arrow across the bottom that says well if you take the log base b of that y i'm going to emphasize every chance that i get this is not saying b to the y power in here the log base b the b is attached to that log is a description of what kind of logarithm it is what kind of exponential it goes with and it says if you do that and you follow that arrow then you are going to arrive at x. Okay. These two expressions say exactly the same thing, just in a different order. Okay. One of them is called the exponential form. That's the one that involves the exponent on the left. And then we have a logarithmic form of that same relationship. And one of the things we want to be able to do is move back and forth between an exponential form and a logarithmic form, and some of these properties are going to make that a little bit easier. Our first property is the multiplication property that says the log base b of m times n is equal to the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. It has this kind of thing where multiplication can be changed into an addition problem. Okay. And so some examples here. Uh, one that we could do, we could say, well, if I had the log base 7 of, uh, let's say it's 15x squared, well, that means 15 times x squared, so I could split that and say that's the same thing as the log base 7 of 15 plus the log base 7 of x squared. Okay which could be a handy thing for a number of different reasons that we will come across as we go. Um, I'm going to put a second example up here. In the second example, I'm going to use this in the other direction. Okay. So we might see this right-hand side might be the thing that we see first. And so we might see the log base 8 of... Uh, 5 plus the log base 8 of 9. Well, this property says that's the same thing as the log base 8 of 5 times 9 or the log base 8 of 45. So I can combine separate logarithms as long as the bases are the same. It's the same thing that happened with the exponentials. If the bases weren't the same, then I couldn't take advantage of all of those properties. Okay especially the multiplication and division ones. Okay. And same thing applies right here. 
Okay. So, um, property number two, the division property, very much like uh, what we were doing before. So, my first example there, I'm going to go with the log base two of um, five sevenths. We do the log base two of five sevenths. That's the log base two of the numerator minus the log base two of the denominator. And so if I know what the log base five, log base two of five is, and what the log base two of seven is, then I can figure out what the log base two of five sevenths is by just subtracting those numbers. It's this unique combination of things, but it's very consistent with what we see in the relationships between multiplication and division and exponentials and logarithms, that in some way, multiplication becomes addition and division becomes subtraction. This, of course, would work with uh, variables in there as well. If I add the uh, log base five, um, we'll, we'll go the other direction with this one, the log base five of uh, one minus the log base five of uh, 25. I could rewrite that as the log base five of one over 25. And at this point right now, it's feeling like, what good does this do me? Because I don't know what any of these logarithm values are. And we're going to get to that a little bit. Um, but it is something that is built into your calculator. Okay? Just like there is a caret button that does exponentials on your calculator, there is a logarithm button on there as well. But you probably only have one, and we'll have to get to how we deal with that uh, probably in a, a later video. I don't think I'm going to try to jam that into this one. Okay, there's a power rule on this one too that says log base b of m to the n power. Okay. Well, this kind of makes sense in terms of the multiplication rule again. If I had the log base 4 of uh, 7 to the third power, Okay. Well, I'm going to kind of do this as a, as a justification. 7 to the third power, of course, means 7 times 7 times 7. So this is the same thing as log base 4 of 7 times 7 times 7. But my multiplication rule would tell me that's the same thing as the log base 4 of 7 plus the log base 4 of 7 plus the log base 4 of 7. But that's just log base 4 of 7 three times. So that's three times the log base 4 of 7, which is exactly what this rule says here. It says that whatever was up here in the exponent, when you put a logarithm out in front, it's like it drops down here in front because it's saying I'm multiplying this thing this many times together inside, which means I would have that many of those added together, and my shortcut for repeated addition is multiplication. Okay. This becomes especially effective. This is kind of, if I was going to give my preference to one of these and say one of these is more important than the other ones, this is the more important one. Okay. Um, as another example here, if I did the log base, uh, and I guess we can have log base one half, we said the b could be any number bigger than zero, but not one. So, uh, and if I do that for... 8 to the 2x power, okay, which looks like an exponential function with a logarithm in front of it now, then this actually, the 2x comes down in front, and this becomes 2x times the log base 1 half of 8. And if I can figure out where the log base 1 half of 8 is, or get my calculator to tell me what it is, then this problem now that had a number in an exponent, which is notoriously difficult to deal with, now my variable is out here amongst all of the other numbers. It doesn't look exponential anymore. Um, and that's going to be the key when it comes to trying to solve exponential equations later. Okay. Um, this one, what I'm going to justify here, I'm going to take this log base b of 1 equals 0, and I'm going to write it in its exponential form. 
Okay. So I'm going to use my arrow diagram to help me with that. It's uh, like it started with a 1, and then I take the log base B of that 1, and it says I'm supposed to get a 0. Well, the opposite of log base B is B to the power. So if I read this in the other direction, it says if I start with that 0, and I put the 0 in the exponent of the B, then I'm going to end up at 1. Okay. Well, this is the exponential property that said anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay. This is saying exactly that same thing, it's just in a different form. This is the same thing as anything to the 0 power is 1. It takes a little while with the new notation for us to get used to it and recognize it and see that anytime we have a log base anything, regardless of what the base is, of 1, the answer is always going to be 0. Okay. This also fits with the points that we put on the parent function because on the logarithm function, the point 1, 0 is one of those points. That's uh, giving exactly the same information that way. Okay. All right. Uh, a couple more things to go here. The log base B of B is 1. Let's do the same thing with this as we did before. So if I start with a B and I take the log base b of it, then it says I'm supposed to get a 1. Okay. Now the arrow coming back again would be b to the power, and so if I start with the 1 and I come back across the bottom, it's going to tell me that b to the first power is equal to d. Well, that wasn't even, that's too easy to list as a property, right? That b to the first power means b. Okay, that's all that is, and that's what this is saying. Okay, that if you do the log base b of b, you're always going to get 1 as an answer. That's hugely important. Okay, and it doesn't seem obvious because we're not familiar with logarithms. We, meaning all of you guys, I've been doing logarithms for a long time now. This has become as automatic to me as the b to the first equals b, and it can get that way for you as well. Okay. And when it comes to working with exponentials and logarithms, it's going to be important that we get that. All right. Um, we talk about lazy mathematician shortcuts every once in a while. We know that if we're writing a variable, like just writing x, there are at least four lazy mathematician shortcuts that are happening there. One of them says, I don't have to put the 1 out in front. Okay? If I'm just multiplying by 1, I can leave the 1 off. I don't have to put a 1 in the exponent. If the exponent's 1, I don't have to write it there. I don't have to write divided by 1. If I'm dividing by 1, I don't have to write that. Okay? And I don't have to put plus 0 on here. If I'm just adding 0, there's nothing really to do. So when I write x and understand it as 1x to the first power over 1 plus 0, okay, there's a lot of shortcuts that are going on in there. Okay. So my shortcuts when it comes to um, oops, okay, my shortcuts when it comes to logarithms have to do with the fact that they've decided that because we live in a decimal world, and metric and all of that, and everything is very commonly written as powers of 10. Our number system is base 10. You understand that base now maybe a little more than you did before. Our number system is base 10. When we write in scientific notation, we write times 10 to the power because we are base 10 in the things that we're doing. So um, because base 10 is so common, Instead of writing log base 10 of something, we just write log of something. Okay? This is called the common logarithm. So our lazy mathematician shortcut for logarithms says that if the base is 10, then you don't have to write a base. But of course, that means that as an Algebra 2 level mathematician now, when you see a logarithm without a base, you need to understand that that means that the base is 10. Okay. 
All right, that is it for uh, this video on the properties of logarithms.